Hola, hola, soy Señorita Spanish. Welcome to my video. Today we'll be tackling CC questions from the category of daily routine. Let's get started. But before we do, don't forget to hit that like button. Ensure that you subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that you can be notified every single time I post a new video. Let's jump into our first question. ¿Qué tareas domésticas? O que haceres haces en casa. This question is asking what chores or domestic tasks do you do at home? So we have two synonyms here. You might hear que haceres, which means chores, or you might hear tareas domésticas, which is another way to say chores or literally speaking, domestic tasks. We could respond to this by saying, Normalmente, en casa, yo lavo los platos, hago mi cama, y preparo la comida con mi madre los domingos. Normally, at home, I wash the dishes, I make my bed, and I prepare the food with my mother on Sundays. Our next question is, ¿Quién en tu familia hace las tareas domésticas? It is very important for us to understand the question words that are being asked. So here we have the question word, ¿Quién? Which means, who? So this can be translated as, who in your family does the chores? En mi familia... Todos comparten los quehaceres. In my family, everyone shares the chores. Mientras mi madre siempre prepara la comida, lava la ropa y limpia la casa, mi padre corta el césped, lava los platos y ayuda con los deberes. Mis hermanos y yo hacemos las camas y limpiamos el baño. So I approach this response by stating that at home in our family, we all share the chores. And then I went to state how these chores were allocated. So in my family, everyone shares the chores. While my mother always prepares the meal, washes the clothes and cleans the house, my father cuts the lawn, washes the dishes and helps with the homework. My siblings and I, make the beds, and clean the bathroom. I also have a little phrase here that is great for you to learn, which is, I do everything at home. Yo hago todo en casa. So in case you want to approach the question by stating, you know, really and truly, I'm the one that does everything at home. This could be a great sentence starter. And then you go on to elaborate on the various chores that you do. Let's move on to the next question. We're still on the topic of chores because with daily routine, you can be asked a variety of questions on similar topics in different ways, and we have to be prepared for all of them. So this one says, ¿Te gusta hacer esas tareas domésticas? ¿Por qué? Do you like to do those domestic tasks or chores and why? So I responded negatively as well as positively. The natural response is a negative response because I'm pretty sure teenagers don't like to do chores. So I responded by saying pues, which is a great way to start your sentence, which means well. Pues honestamente no, porque los quehaceres son muy agotadores y aburridos. Y no tengo mucho tiempo libre. 
So, well, honestly, no, because chores are very exhausting and boring and I don't have a lot of free time. Just to point out here, because we're talking about a plural noun, los que haceres, we have to ensure that the adjectives we use to describe chores are also pluralized. My positive response is, pues sí. Me gusta hacer los que haceres porque son útiles, divertidos, y me gusta un espacio limpio. Me gusta ser limpia. This means, well, yes, I like to do chores because they are useful, fun, and I like a clean space or I like to be clean. Next question. ¿Qué tarea doméstica no te gusta hacer? Very popular question, by the way. What domestic task don't you like to do? No me gusta, which is I don't like, or we could say yo detesto, which is I hate. No me gusta, or yo detesto, planchar la ropa, porque es agotador, lleva mucho tiempo, y es muy aburrido. This means, I don't like to iron clothes because it is exhausting, it takes a lot of time, and it is very boring. So just to backtrack, agotador means exhausting. Lleva mucho tiempo means it takes a lot of time. And we know aburrido means boring. Let's move on to another question in the daily routine category. ¿Qué haces normalmente en la tarde después de las clases? We're finished with the tourist questions and we're now on to a question that is asking us about our daily activities. Specifically, this is asking us, what do you do normally in the afternoon after classes? The response I gave was, Generalmente, we could have also said normalmente or usualmente. Después de las clases, yo miro la televisión por una hora para relajarme. Después, yo hago mis deberes, escucho música, me baño y estudio. I'm always going to advise you to give at least three activities or at least three reasons for every question that is asked. So my response here is, generally after classes, I watch TV for an hour in order to relax myself. Afterwards, I do my homework, I listen to music, I bathe, and I study. A similar question, ¿Qué haces en la noche antes de acostarte? What do you do in the night before going to bed? By the way, when we're in this category, you will hear the question, ¿Qué haces? very often. Because it's asking you, what do you do? What do you do at home? What do you do at school? What do you do in the mornings? What do you do in the afternoons? It is all a part of asking you about your daily routine. So you have to familiarize yourself with this question format. ¿Qué haces? From the verb hacer, what do you do? Let's tackle the response to this question. Antes de acostarme, yo hago mis deberes, me ducho, ceno con mi familia, y me cepillo los dientes. What do you do in the night before going to bed? Before going to bed, antes de followed by the verb in its infinitive. And because we're talking about ourselves, we're going to say acostarme. I do my homework. I shower or I take a shower. I have dinner with my family, seno. And I brush my teeth. This is a question that will include a variety of flexive verbs. Because we're stating the different things that we do to prepare for bed, which usually involves verbs that are reflexive, verbs that are done by you to your own body. 
I brush my teeth, I comb my hair, I bathe myself. So please revise reflexive verbs and ensure that you know them for this category. So we have two here. Me ducho, me cepillo. Our next question is, ¿A qué hora te levantas por las mañanas? And, piggybacking off that question, ¿A qué hora te acuestas por las noches? The first question is asking, at what time do you get up in the mornings? And the second one is asking, at what time do you go to bed in the nights? Similarly, both of these questions are using reflexive verbs. Levan. Te levantas comes from the verb levantarse, which has now been conjugated to the to form. So at what time do you get up? Similarly, te acuestas has been conjugated to the to form as well. At what time do you go to bed? Pause the video right here and try to attempt your response to this question. After which you can unpause and see how I would have responded. To respond to this question, you would need to state the time. So I get up at or I go to bed at a certain time. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, my response was to question one. Me levanto a las cinco y media de la mañana. Todos los días. I get up at 5.30 a.m. every day. Similarly, for the second question, at what time do I go to bed? I responded by saying, Normalmente, me acuesto a eso de las diez de la noche. So we have here two things I want to remind you about. If you want to say half past the hour, we would say y media, which is half past. Or y treinta, which is 30 past. Same thing as half past. So I get up at 5.30 or half past 5 a.m. every day. In this response, I would like to highlight the construct a eso de, which is at about or at around a certain time. So I go to bed at about or at around. Then we need to put the article las diez or las ocho, or las once. It doesn't matter the time that you put, as long as you have the article there. Let's move on to the next question. ¿Qué haces después de levantarte en la mañana? What do you do after getting up in the morning? This just came to me. It's very important also for us to know the words antes and después because they're very popularly used with daily routine to talk about the sequencing of your events. Antes means before, después means after. So what do you do after you get up in the morning? Once again, this will include a number of reflexive verbs to say, I brush my teeth, I take a shower, I comb my hair. So go ahead and pause the video once again and try to practice responding to this question. After which, you can unpause and see the response that I gave. Bueno, vamos a ver mi respuesta. So I responded by saying, Normalmente, yo me baño, me cepillo los dientes, me peino, y me visto. Luego, desayuno y salgo para la escuela. Normally, I bathe, I brush my teeth, I comb my hair, me peino, and I get dressed. Then, I have breakfast and I leave for school. Just a reminder that not every verb is a reflexive verb. Only the verbs that include someone doing an action to his or own self. So I bathe myself, I brush my teeth, I comb my hair, I get dressed by myself. However, we have the verbs desayuno, which is I have breakfast, and I leave. You're doing the actions, but you're not doing the actions with your body part. So you do not need a me or another reflexive pronoun. And we have to be very careful not to mix them up.
Let's move on to the next question. Desayunas? ¿Qué desayunas? What do you think this question means? That's right. Desayunar means to have breakfast. So, simply put, that one-worded question is asking, do you have breakfast, like normally? Are you a person that has breakfast in the mornings? Do you have breakfast? What do you have for breakfast? The first response says, si. Sí. Yo desayuno pan tostado con huevos o panqueques con frutas y té cada mañana. Yes, I have toast bread, pan tostado, with eggs or pancakes with fruits and tea each morning. The negative response is no. No desayuno normalmente porque no tengo mucho tiempo libre por las mañanas. No, I don't have breakfast normally because I don't have a lot of free time in the mornings. Our next question is, normalmente, ¿qué almuerzas durante la semana? Or, durante los domingos. This question is asking, normally, what do you have for lunch during the week or on Sundays? And of course, the examiner can ask you about what you eat during the week, days, or on the weekends. So we will approach both instances. Durante la semana, yo almuerzo una empanada o pollo frito con papas fritas y jugo de naranja. During the week, I have a patty or fried chicken with fries and orange juice for lunch. Usualmente, los domingos, almuerzo el pollo o el cerdo con arroz y guisantes. Usually on Sundays, I have chicken or pork with rice and peas for lunch. Just a reminder to ensure that we revise our food because in daily routine, they can ask you what you have for breakfast, what you have for lunch, what you have for dinner, what you have for snack, what type of dessert you prefer to have. So it's very important that you study food-related vocabulary. We're still on the topic of food. And our next question is, ¿Te gusta comer en restaurantes? ¿Por qué o por qué no? This question is asking us, do you like to eat at restaurants? Why or why not? So, of course, I argued it from both ways. The first response is the positive response that says, sí. Me encanta comer en restaurantes porque es divertido y relajante y también hay más opciones de comida para probar. Let's unpack. Yes, I love to eat at restaurants because it is fun and relaxing and also there are more options of food to try. So I did not just say me gusta, I said me encanta, which is strong. Me gusta is fine, but me encanta shows the extremity to which you really like this activity. And if you use me gusta, it's also just as good. The negative response is pues no, you could even say no, no me gusta, porque en mi opinión, Comer en restaurantes es más caro y prefiero comer en la comodidad de mi hogar. This is basically saying, well, no, because in my opinion, eating at restaurants is more expensive and I prefer to eat in the comfort of my home. Please note this word, hogar means home. Let's move on to another question about food. ¿Qué opinas de la comida rápida? Whenever you hear ¿qué opinas? 
Of course, it's asking about your opinion. What do you think? Or what is your opinion about fast food? Mmm, delicioso, no? Let's see what I said. En mi opinión, creo que la comida rápida no es muy saludable, especialmente si la comes con frecuencia. También tiene mucha grasa, sal y aceite. Por eso, no es bueno para ti. Of course, this is my opinion, and you can borrow it free of charge. It says, in my opinion, I believe that. We could have also said, opino que, using back the same phrase and structure that was asked. Or we could have also said, pienso que, I think that. I believe that fast food is not very healthy, especially if you eat it, referring to la comida, frequently. Also, it has a lot of grease or fat, salt, and oil. Because of this, or for this reason, it is not good for you. Our next question is, ¿Con quién or con quiénes comes en casa generalmente? This question word is asking, with whom? With whom do you eat at home generally? I responded by saying, normalmente yo como con mis padres y mi hermano menor. Very simple question. Normally, I eat with my parents and my little brother or my younger brother. Our next question is, ¿Hasta qué hora duermes los fines de semana? Hasta means until. So until what hour do you sleep on the weekends? Pause the video and try to attempt this question. What would you say? Here's what I said. Normalmente yo duermo hasta las 10, los fines de semana. Porque estoy muy cansada y yo tengo más tiempo para dormir. Normally, I sleep until 10 a.m. on the weekends because I am very tired and I have more time to sleep. But we could have also been specific by stating the time that we wake up on Saturdays versus the time that we wake up on Sundays. So that is what I did down here. Los sábados yo duermo hasta las nueve, pero los domingos me despierto a las siete para ir a la iglesia. And when you break it up like this, it gives you more to see. And it also doesn't mean that you have to give three reasons anymore because you approach it in a different way. On Saturdays, I sleep until nine. But on Sundays, I wake up at seven in order to go to church. So you could also respond to this question by not only using the structure, I sleep until, but we could say, I wake up or I get up. Me despierto or me levanto alas. And then the time frame. Our next question is, ¿Qué haces los domingos que normalmente no haces durante la semana? What do you do on Sundays that you don't normally do during the week. Pues los domingos tengo más tiempo para hacer mis pasatiempos. Por ejemplo, yo puedo jugar videojuegos, dormir, mirar la televisión y salir con mis amigos. Well, on Sundays, I have more time to do my hobbies. For example, I can play video games, sleep, watch TV, and go out with my friends. The next question is a description question, and we have to prepare for these as well. This one is, describe un sábado típico para ti. Describe a typical Saturday for you. Similarly, you could have been asked, describe a typical Sunday, or describe your weekend. 
schedule. So we have to be prepared to describe. What do we do from the start of the day to the end of the day? Normalmente, los sábados, me levanto a eso de las ocho de la mañana. Luego, me cepillo los dientes, desayuno, lavo la ropa y hago mis deberes. Por las tardes, acompaño a mi mamá al supermercado. Y cuando regreso a casa, yo limpio. Yo ceno a las seis, miro la televisión por muchas horas. Y finalmente, me acuesto a las once y media. A very good tip going forward with a question like this that is so detailed is to ensure that we have transitional words. It keeps us going. So I started off by saying normalmente. Then I said luego, then. Then I said por las tardes, in the afternoons, followed by finalmente, which means that that is the final thing to end our description. So let's unpack it. Normally on Saturdays, I get up at about 8 a.m. Then I brush my teeth, I have breakfast, I wash my clothes, and I do my homework. In the afternoons, I accompany my mother to the supermarket, and when I return home, I clean. I have dinner at 6. I watch the TV for many hours, and finally, I go to bed at 11.30. Another tip for a question like this is to include as many activities as possible. And to make it even better, we can include some time instances. Now, you don't have to include the time instances for every activity, but for at least two or three. So I included the time three times. When I got up, the time I had dinner, and the time I went to bed. Our next question is, ¿Qué haces normalmente un día cuando no tienes que ir a la escuela? What do you think this question is asking? What do you do normally on a day where you don't have to go to school? So once again, it's an activity-driven question. What are the activities that you do when you don't have to go to school? I just want to point out this structure, tener que. Tener is to have. But if you want to say to have to, we say tener with que. So tengo que, it's I have to. So tengo que, and it is followed by the verb in its infinitive. The response I conjured up is normalmente, Cuando no tengo que ir a la escuela, yo duermo hasta tarde, miro mucha televisión, juego videojuegos, o navego por internet. A veces, yo voy al parque para jugar al fútbol. Normally, when I don't have to go to school, I sleep until late or I sleep in. I watch a lot of television, I play video games, or I surf the internet. Sometimes, a veces, sometimes, I go to the park to play football. I just want to say right here that this category of daily routine involves a lot of present tense because you're constantly stating what you do on a daily basis. So ensure that you know the present tense. Of course, you need to know all the other tenses, but especially the present tense for this category since you'll have to be conjugating to the your form in particular quite often, as well as the nosotros form, whether stating what you do or what you and your friends or family do on a daily basis. Let's move on to our next question. ¿Qué prefieres? ¿Hablar por teléfono o charlar en internet? ¿Por qué? Within daily routine, they can also ask you about the technology that you use because young people love their technology and they do use it on a daily basis. So this question is asking us, what do you prefer? Speaking on the phone or chatting on the internet? Why? 
prefiero, I prefer, followed by the infinitive of the verb. So prefiero hablar. We can say prefiero hablo. So prefiero hablar. And usually when we have two verbs right beside each other, the first one will be conjugated to the subject, the person who is doing the action, and the other verb will remain in the infinitive. So I prefer to speak. Prefiero hablar por teléfono porque la comunicación es más rápida. Puedo oír la persona con quien hablo y es más divertida tener una conversación instantáneamente. Let's unpack this question. I prefer to speak on the phone or to talk on the phone because the communication is easier. The communication is quicker. I can hear the person with whom I'm speaking and it is more fun to have a conversation in real time. Would you agree? Our next question is a similar question. ¿Usas tu teléfono celular cada día? ¿A quiénes llamas con frecuencia? So we have a two-part question. Do you use your cell phone every day? And to whom do you call frequently? Who is it that you call frequently? So to answer the first part, I said, Pues, claro que sí. Yo uso mi móvil cada día para hablar con mis amigos, mandar mensajes de texto y navegar las redes sociales. I have some vocabulary for you. Well, of course, claro que sí. Of course I use my phone. Móvil is another way to say cell phone. So of course I use my phone each day. And then we're stating the why. They did not ask why. But we have to prepare ourselves and give them the reasons, even if it is not solicited, so that you have an edge. And so that they don't ask you a follow-up question and you're unprepared to answer it. So, of course, I use my phone every day to talk to my friends, send text messages, and surf social media. Las redes sociales is how we say social media. Now, the follow-up question was, who do you talk to frequently? Or who do you call frequently? Normalmente, yo llamo más a mis amigos. So, normally, I call my friends more. Or we could say, normalmente, yo llamo... A mis amigos con frecuencia. Let's move on to our next question. Our next question is, ¿Qué vas a hacer esta noche? What are you going to do tonight? Esta noche, tonight. Now, this question uses the construct ir, a, and then a verb in the infinitive. It is the present future tense to state what someone is going to do. So we will have our form of ear, whatever conjugation, whatever tense we're using it in. And in this case, it's the present tense. Then we need a. And then the activity that we're going to do will remain in the infinitive. Similarly, it's right here. What are you going? So ear has been conjugated to the to form. Then we have our a. And then we have to do, or verb hacer has remained in the infinitive. So in responding to this question, we also need to use this construct. Yo voy a, and then our activities. Let's see what I said. Esta noche, yo voy a estudiar por al menos tres horas, cocinar y leer mi libro favorito. Tonight, I'm going to study for at least three hours, cook and read my favorite book. Al menos, just to point out this vocab, means at least. So we have the structure, yo voy a, and then I have my verbs in the infinitive. You have to be consistent. You can't start out by saying, yo voy a estudiar, and then come down here and say, cocino. You have to remain consistent by 
constantly putting back the verb in the infinitive throughout the rest of the sentence. Also, you do not have to repeat your voy a over and over again. So your voy a estudiar, your voy a cocinar, you don't have to do that. Your voy a and then your verbs. Our final question. Woohoo! Dirías que tu horario diario es difícil o no? Por qué o por qué no? What do you think this question is asking? Take a minute to look at it. Do you know what verb this is? Do you know what tense this is? So this verb is the verb decir, to say or to tell. And it is currently in the conditional tense. So would you say, would you say that your schedule is difficult or not? Horario is a very good word to know, especially in this category of daily routine. So ensure that you note it down, horario. The response I gave was, pues, diría que, I would say, pues, diría que sí, I would say yes, right? Diría que sí. Pues, diría que sí, porque siempre tengo mucha tarea que hacer. Estudio muchas asignaturas, tengo demasiados deberes, Y no tengo tiempo libre para relajarme. Well, I would say yes, because I always have a lot of work to do. I study a lot of subjects. I have a lot of homework. Sorry, I have too much homework. And I don't have free time to relax myself. Would you say this is true? Just to point out the changes that are happening throughout this response with mucho. We know mucho to mean a lot, but of course it is an adjective. So it changes to match the noun that we're talking about. So here we have mucha tarea. And when we go down here, we're talking about muchas asignaturas. We could have even, we could have even said mucho tiempo libre. So it changes. Similarly, we have this word demasiado. It is also an adjective. It means too much. So we have demasiado, demasiada, demasiados, as well as demasiadas. And in this case, we're talking about deberes, which is masculine and plural. So I have too much homework, masculine and plural as well. Please feel free to pull from this question to adopt it, to make it your own, to practice it. And that goes for all of the responses we explored today. We've come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my other videos, continue practicing, and all the best in your preparations for your oral exam. Adios.